practice a little bit with model based clustering. Let's create a new script and I'm going to import some libraries that are going to be useful. Of course, Factor Extra, which is my, is like the carrot for, for aggregation. Remember carrot? Okay, I'm going to import mass, it's going to be useful later, and also ggplot too, of course. Okay, let me copy a link to the data set. Here we are. And let's ggplot this. Plot data is going to be X and Y, and here we go. So you can see this is the, the data set that I use in the video. So you can see one cluster here, and maybe another big cluster there, or a couple of a smaller clusters in the other side. We can also play with this other layer called GM density 2D. And in this case, we can just plug and let the algorithm automatically find the best choice, the, the, what is called the bandwidth of of the aggregation part, but this is an empirical uh, empirical density, so this has nothing to do with Gaussian density. Of course, if we change the parameter adjust, let's say equal five, then we end up with something which is very, I don't know, very rough. And if we reduce this to, let's say, 0.3, then we see something which is very wiggly, and this is not a, a, an accurate description of the density there, okay? I'm going to use the library mclast, which is going to do a model-based clustering, and now you can simple you can simply use this to plot a kind of the same density as ggplot but in a more substantiated substantiated way so let's say define density and ctm class and now let's take the data and now we can plot a density if you just take plot the basic plot it's going to uh, it's going to ask you what type of plot you want to plot so let's try that so you can use a bic plot and a density plot if you choose density plot then you see something like that. But now you can see that here is trying to use Gaussian plot. So it's, it's not using empirical density plot. Press zero if you want to leave. But also you can do this manually, which is much better if you want to, to run a whole script at the same time. So you can say what you want to plot, density, and you would have the same outcome. And actually you can do more fancy stuff. So you can say you have a couple of types and one of the types is perspective. So you have this 3D plot, which is going to impress your friends, okay? Now let's do some real machine learning. So let's create this object, MC, and let's call the function MC class, the data. And this automatically, if you take a look at the help, automatically is going to run all the algorithms. So all the models from EII to VVV. But you can specify uh, the number of clusters you want to try and you can specify what, what models you want to try, but it's going to be, of course, uh, slower. And if you want to explore the idea of having equally sized Gaussian distributions, you can run this more, more readily. Okay, so now we have all the fitting. And again, if you type plot MC, it, it is going to ask you what type of plot you want to do. If you plot BIC, you have this sort of comparison between models. The higher the curve, the better. So in this case, the winner is going to be this one, which is VII, as we saw in the theory. You can also try to plot classification and then you have the description of this parameter. Remember that VII means that we have different volumes, but all, all the parameters are aligned with the axis. We can also try to plot an uncertainty plot and, and then you see what, what part of the data set is going to be poorly classified according to this algorithm. And of course you can type a density plot and you end up with something in the same fashion and this command before. Okay, let's take a look. Let's press zero. Let's take a look at the data here. It's a summary of MC. So the winning model is VII, as we saw in the BIC plot. So basically the best model, according to the number of parameters, is going to be a spherical varying volume. So, and this is the outcome. And here you have three clusters. And is the, that's the winning situation. And the size of the clusters is around there. Okay. If you, again, if you go back to, to the plot, you can see which, which corresponds to one. We also can, can make use of the library factor extra. So you have actually a function which is called fvsm class. If you add this function, this part bic, and you use the fit, automatically, uh, sorry, m class bic, back to extra. Okay, here we go. Then you see the same plot as before, but with these fancier colors. And if you remove that part, you have to specify the type. So for instance, if you type classification, then you get the final clusters. If you use uncertainty, 
then you see the, the, the uncertainty plot, but with this fancier GG plot kind of style. I think it's worth exploring the contents of, of this object. So you have a lot of information there, and, and if you type, for instance, MC parameters, then you can see a lot of stuff. So you can see the, the winning model, but you can see also the location of the center of the of each cluster. So we have three clusters, so these are the coordinates. So one of them is going to be a 2, 4, which is going to be this point to... Uh, this is not matching. Ah, because maybe this is normalized, so let, let me go back to this plot here. Uh, classification... Yeah, you have to be careful with, with this function in fact to exit because sometimes it does some messy stuff. So going back to these parameters, you can see again that the center is going to be at 2, 4. That, that is going to be this probably. The other one is 124 and minus 34. So this is going to correspond to this one. And 223 and 176, which is going to be this point. Okay, So you can actually measure some stuff with that. You can also have the type of variance. And as we are using a spherical one, you can see that the covariance matrix of each cluster is going to be diagonal. So you don't have any out there. And that means that this is not rotated. And you have different sizes, so you can see that th this Gaussian is going to be larger than, so smaller than this one, and this is related to the V in the volume part. But also you can see that the variance is going to be the same in its axis, and this the reason why is because this is spherical again. Let's plot again the BIC plot, so let's choose one, and here you can see that clearly the winner is one, but you could say, okay, the difference is not that large with 2 and 4. So sometimes you're interested in forcing the number of parameters because you have some biased information or you want to classify everything in, let's say, healthy and unhealthy patients or whatever. So you can run the algorithm again. So you, you can have a second feed, let's say. It's going to be M class, uh, sorry. M capital M, M class data equ G equals 2 directly. Okay, sorry, we have to leave that part and again if you do some plotting now you're forcing these to be two-dimensional okay but now maybe you have win something and in this case if you plot uh, sorry an uncertainty plot you can see that the only uncertainty point is going to be this one again it, depending on your bias information or your prior information about the problem you you can go in one direction or the other okay let's play with another data set we're going to use a nice data set which is called Banknote, which is a classical data data set aim actually it's in the help is is aimed to to test some classification methods in order to find fake ba banknotes in, in a Swiss bank or something like that. Of course a Swiss bank, yeah. So let's play a little bit a little bit with this data data set. So first of all let's explore what is inside. So bank note. Okay, if you take a look at that. Okay, let's zoom this. Okay. And here we go. So you have this categorical variable, and this categorical variable is related to the, the, the good banknotes and the bad banknotes. And the idea is can you predict those variables without training? So using an unsupervised algorithm, a clustering algorithm. So let's try that idea. So now we're going to, to use M class. You can actually use K means or whatever you want, but let's use M class class bank note and remember if you take a look at uh, take a look at the data bank note you see that the first one is the categorical one and and you have two factors one is counterfeit and the other is i don't know the name let me check summary bank note the other one is genuine okay so let's remove that from our data set because we don't want to classify we don't want to cluster the, the, the real outcome. Okay, so let's play this blindly. And again, now we have our fit. Let's do some plottings. Okay, let's start with classification. Let's take a look at that. Uh, sorry, where is that? Uh, yes. So here you can see all the parameters, uh, the, the length of the bank node, the, the left, some, some distance on the left, the right, the diagonal, and so on and so forth. And you can see that everything seems to be mixed up. So it's not so simple. And the problem is that in this case, we don't have two-dimensional data. We have multi-dimensional data, so it's not so easy to plot. But you can see that it's a lot of overlapping in one of the variables. So in this case, clustering is pretty good. So the diagonal seems to be a good criterion for, for classification. But some other ones, like this length or, or left, you can see that probably the blue points are, are not visible because 
they are hidden because some some of, of the other clusters let's take a look at BIC and this is interesting because you can learn actually a lot from that you can see that these two models are really bad so and, and essentially those are related to a spherical one so those simple models cannot capture the complexity of the data in this case the green and these bluish lines are not so good and all all the world is actually probably three classes going to be the best one instead of two remember that the real data set has just two of them but three is the winner and among the winners you can see that this one with asterisk which is VEE is going to be probably the best choice in terms of the number of parameters and so on and so forth but again you can see that four is also a good choice maybe five even two could be a good choice for classification let's plot now uncertainty and again you cannot see anything but you can see that you have some points which are not not very good, well classified because you are not sure to what to what extent you are you are telling in which cluster they belong so let's do something more quantitative let's say that we want to create a table in which we are going to depict the bank no the the, the, the categorical variable banknote status yes that was the name and now the feed that we have done MC, uh, I think it's classification is the variable inside. Yes, so you can see that among the genuine, probably all of them belong to this, the cluster number two. And the counterfeit, we have two clusters. One cluster number one, which has 16 elements, and cluster number uh, three, which has 18, 84 elements. And this is good. That means that cluster number two is capturing all the good mm, bug nodes, but we have some confusion there. So there are uh, kind of two quality falsification of the banknotes and this is interesting to explore so this is a kind of confusion so let's use principal component analysis to, to do a, um, a more simplified uh, representation of the data so let's use FBIS cluster as we have done before let's take this feed event object and now the data without our first column and here we go and this is the reason why we couldn't see anything so you can see that the first two dimensions are are not that large but basically are 70 percent of the variance i will explain that in, in the videos on pca but here you can see that th this group there would remember that the cluster number two corresponded pretty well to these genuine data uh, dating back nodes and you have we have some confusion there so there's some overlapping between clusters two and three so maybe it's worth to repeat the analysis but instead of using that using forcing that to be two clusters oh sorry let's duplicate this and now let's force this to g equals two okay let's do some plotting again uh, let's play let's say classification okay we don't see anything uncertainty there are some still some some bank notes which are not very well classified and what is more interesting to me is repeat this approximation and now you can see that we can have a, a kind of straight boundary between two points so probably we're classifying better let's do repeat the table again and here we go this is amazing actually we have reached an accuracy of almost 100 percent so remember accuracy in this case would be the sum of the diagonals 199 divided by 200 okay so we have an accuracy of 99.5 percent but we couldn't have seen this if we plot uh, let's plot again the big vic this m class vic mc no let's just go let's go back there now now i force g equals two and that's why this plot is nonsense uh here we go but this is not clear here why is that because vic is trying to maximize uh, let's say the probability of classifying well but penalizing for the number of parameters and here you can see that having two components is not seems to be not a very good choice but you have to be very careful because sometimes the suboptimal options are better so in this case i would have tried always the, the, the options which are one side to the left and one side to the right. Again, you can try with this data set for, for different algorithms like k-means or hierarchical clustering, but this is a very good example of how to classify, in this case, falsified banknotes using a very simple algorithm.